Hey, this is Devin Townsend, and you are watching Loudwire. So, uh, the first riff that ever really inspired me to learn how to play uh, must have been Motorhead. The song Motorhead by Motorhead. I remember when I was a kid, we could get a Seattle radio station up in Vancouver, and they used to play metal, K-I-S-W. And whenever the uh, first riff from the song Motorhead came on, I think it was from a live version, uh, I just thought that seems well within the possibilities for me to learn. And it had a, um, it had a momentum to it that I loved. And I don't know the key anymore, but I think it was just the... Uh... I think it was actually the bass that was playing it. I think that was Lemmy's part that... And I actually learned it on an old acoustic guitar um, I had bought from Sears catalog. And the neck had broke, like the uh, um, where it joins the body had broken. And so I could pull the guitar body and the neck together and it would be like a, a whammy bar effect. But that was the first riff that actually really made me think, hey, I could learn that. The first riff I ever learned was probably Folsom Prison Blues by Johnny Cash. Uh, with distortion, it sounds a little weird, but it's like... That chord there. And time keeps moving. How's it go? That's it. That was it. In high school, we always used to pass notes to each other because Van Halen was such a big deal when I was a kid that we would all try to figure out eruption or Spanish fly or whatever, you know, all this tapping licks and all the, you know. All that sort of Van Halen stuff was uh, a big part of it. But there was a couple people in my school that were great at it. And I was okay at copying people's licks. I, even from a very early age, I always sort of, um, always kind of gravitated towards writing my own stuff. And the Van Halen stuff was so idiosyncratic. He was just so Edward Van Halen all the time that whenever I played it, it just never really felt the same. So I spent much more time learning uh, Judas Priest and Iron Maiden and Wasp and things like that. Were there any techniques that I struggled with when I was first starting? Well, I would say that the same techniques I struggled with then, I continue to struggle with now. And the main one was alternate picking. I've never been a very proficient alternate picker. The, uh, at the time when I was growing up, they had all those hot licks and REH videos and I saw Paul Gilbert doing all that crazy. And I remember thinking, wow, I just, I really want to woodshed and get that down. But I also was just so much into the sweeps that uh, I, I focused on doing sweep picking so I could learn how to do that sort of thing. But when it comes to that kind of that sort of alternate picking thing, it's always been a, a it's never been my strong suit. So I sort of got more into the auto sort of thing. I could do that. You know. That was more my speed. But then whenever someone wanted to go into the that sort of thing. I can still, you know, I can do it in short bursts, but I could never do it like Paul Gilbert did it. So I focus much more on tapping and, and then the legato stuff. And then I left uh, the alternate picking up to the kids in the school that were uh, focused on that. But still to this day, if I can get away with getting another guitar player in my life to play the alternate picking parts, then that's the direction I'm going to go. What was the first solo I learned? Well, I think as much as I uh, was into Led Zeppelin and, and that nobody's fault was my, nobody's fault but mine was a, that na 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 But I, even then I, I, you know, had a flanger on it and I didn't have a flanger pedal. 
And when I first got a guitar with a whammy bar on it, I was convinced that the whammy bar was the key to being able to be a professional guitar player. That's all you had to do is just grab it and go bananas. So I learned the Twisted Sister solo, I think, um, from We're Not Gonna Take It, is it? Wait. Then it does a... That's the first time I played it since I was 12, which was many moons ago, my friends. Okay, so some of my favorite riffs, I just loved the riffs that Judas Priest did. They, it was just, they were reasonably simple. That's a good one. Bunch of Judas Priest riffs. What was another one that I thought? Oh, uh, uh, Fast Way. That was a good one for me too. The... during that time had that chord. Yeah, like Iron Maiden too. <laughs> it's been, like I don't typically play in standard tuning. I usually play in open C, so it's funny when I go back to standard tuning, how much I realize that my skill set for standard ended when I was 15. So all the songs that I know are still from that era. What was the, uh, right? Let's see light tonight. <laughs> That's another one I knew from back then. Uh, Thunder and Rock. That was the other one um, uh, by Fist. <laughs> KTEL um, uh, compilation, Masters of Metal, Volume 1. But I think the most defining riff for me as a kid, my favorite song when I was an uh, early adolescent, was Victim of Changes by Judas Priest, which is the... Uh... <laughs> that i was a i was a dopey metalhead i still am to be fair what are some favorite riffs of my stuff um well at the risk of sounding more pretentious than i already do i tend to not be really riff based i wonder if that's an excuse for not having a ton of good riffs but uh 
I tend to sort of stack my uh, writing so it's sort of more orchestrated than than based on a guitar, bass, and drum thing. But I guess there's a few in there somewhere, like Vampire was a kind of a cool riff, I guess. That's... I guess a passable lick. I started using a ton of echo very early on and it kind of became my trip. And I guess um, on Ocean Machine, that first record I had. Truth from Infinity was kind of a cool riff, too. favorite riffs from the new record well I guess the newest record I did was empath a few years or a year or so ago don't remember anymore time has sort of turned into this gumbo of weirdness over this whole pandemic so somewhere in the past empath came out and again it's not really a riff heavy album but there's a couple I really like and a lot of the riffs that I enjoy playing the most are really knuckle dragging riffs because I tend to think um, structurally and melodically in ways that are, are fairly complicated. But I find that if the, the basis, you know, the very, the very um, brass tacks of a song, bass, drums, and guitar are also complicated, it just sort of becomes off-putting to me. So I tend to try and get really simple octaves and fifths playing riffs and then have it really dead on in tune and then layer all those strange melodic and rhythmic things over top of it. So Evermore, I think that's a great riff. I love the riff for Evermore. And it's two chords. It's just a... Uh... <laughs> But over top of it, you can get the I like that riff. And what else is on Empath that's riff riffy? God, I don't know if there's any other riffs. I think it's just a whole a whole slew of nonsense other than that one. But uh, I'll write some riffs for the next record. I'll make it up to you. Anyway. This has been Devin Townsend, your resident guitar nerd for the day. And uh, I would like to say thank you to Loudwire for allowing me to uh, relive my teenaged, uh, very possibly masturbatory years in more ways than one. And I hope you're getting through the pandemic as best as you can. I know it's a strange time for everyone. So play guitar, let her rip, wear woolly hats in the middle of summer, and uh, don't forget to suck it. This is Devin Townsend. See you later.